hello and welcome to my favorite books of 2021 video. It is so hard to believe that 2021 is almost over. And before it ended, I wanted to do a video on my favorite books that I read in 2021. So for my categories, I have five with one of them kind of being split into two. So the first one is middle grade, but I have a couple books that are like what I would call wholesome vintage. And then I have the other three, which are just your normal middle grade books. And then the second category is young adult. And then the next category is nonfiction. And then I also have a favorite that is in the graphic novel category. And then my last category is adult. Within each category, I am going to share starting with my least favorite and ending with my favorite. So starting with the five middle grade books, two of them are what I would categorize as wholesome. And so the first one of those two is Swallows and Amazon by Arthur Ransom. Swallows and Amazon is a children's adventure and it is the first book in the Swallows and Amazon series. It was published in 1930 and it is set in the England's Lake District. And we follow four kids in the Swallows family and then two sisters in the Blackett family as well as the uncle in the Blackett family and they're the Amazons. And this is the story of their summer of adventure and hijinks and there's some mystery in it and it is you know, not a huge plot driven, intense novel, but it's just really great children being left on their own and having adventure out in nature. And I can't recommend it high enough. And there is a movie on Amazon Prime. I'm so glad they can come up here and do all the things I took for granted. I don't want them frightened of the world. There's our light. We could count. Keep under the stars. Please say yes. I promise I'll look after everybody. She's a beauty, isn't she? Wait for me! It follows the book loosely. There is a lot more intensity in the movie than there actually was in the book. The second of my favorite books that I read this year in that wholesome middle grade category is The Summer of Monkeys by Wilson Rawls. Wilson Rawls wrote Where the Red Fern Grows. So I was a little nervous about reading Summer of Monkeys because Where the Red Fern Grows, while it's memorable and lovely, it is like rip your heart out and stomp on it kind of a book in my opinion. So Summer of Monkeys was written in 1976. The main character is a 14 year old boy named J. Barry Lee who discovers monkeys in a nearby river area. He and his grandfather then decide that they are going to try to catch the monkeys in order to get the reward money from the circus from which the monkeys have escaped. And there is actually some magic in there. We can't now pass a ring of mushrooms growing in a circle without talking about the fairy ring and how special that is. So, and we're always looking for it. So it's just one of those books that when you read it together, it creates kind of this culture. It had me laughing out loud and I'm, you know, I don't laugh out loud that much when I'm reading, but it was hilarious. And at the end, I actually was like crying, like real tears. Again, I'm not a big crier. And this book had me going in both directions. I will say, there is a scene in which Jay Barry comes across some moonshine and somehow he and the monkeys end up drinking it and so there is this point where he drinks too much and there's consequences but I thought it was very well done and I think something good for middle grade kids to kind of understand alcohol and its consequences and to kind of see it through the book and be exposed to it that way, I, th I thought it was very well done and I had no qualms with my 11 year old reading it. Okay, so the next three middle grade of the five are kind of these fantasy thrillers, I think. So the first one is Sophie Choir and La The Last Story Guard by Jonathan Oxier. It is the second book in the Peter Nimble adventure series, but you don't need to read the first one to read Sophie Choir. Our main character, Sophie, is a 12 year old book mender and Peter Nimble and Sir Toad, who is a character from the first book, but you'll, you get introduced to them similar in the second book so again not a big deal if you don't know who they are they arrive on Sophie's doorstep with this rare mysterious book that they want her to mend 
and there is a lot of magic and fantasy as is in all of Jonathan Oxier's books and I loved reading it this year. So I read a lot of books this year with Keeper in the title. It can kind of go on with all of them, but the one that I like the best, it's kind of a surprise to me, is called The Storm Keeper's Island, which is the first of a middle grade series by Catherine Doyle. And our main character is Fionn Boyle, who travels to Erin Moore Island, which seems to kind of have this life of its own. This life of its own. And through a series of events, Fionn learns that the island chooses someone to be the Storm Keeper. That kind of keeps its magic set safe. I think you can wield that power to create storms and weather events. But unbeknownst to Fionn, his grandfather is the last storm keeper. And there are family vendettas on the island that are getting in the way of the island choosing the next storm keeper. I loved the, the elements of family bonding and connection and kind of being estranged, but then through a series of events, really kind of standing behind your family. It just was really a, a great, like I said, surprise favorite for 2021. The last one in this middle grade series is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman's most famously known for writing Coraline. Um, he writes, kind of reminds me of like a modern day Ray Bradbury. He kind of writes these creepy thrillers. I, while the, I'm putting this in middle grade, I think sometimes it gets categorized as a young adult because the book opens with a terrible murder of a family in which only a baby boy is accidentally spared. And so then we follow the story of this boy who's named Nobody Bod Owens, who is adopted by and grows up under the watchful support of these supernatural inhabitants in the graveyard. It's his journey of finding out where he came from, what happened to his family, and who he is and why his family was a target to begin with. I read this during the fall and so it was a very atmospheric creepy read and I did not pass this on to my middle grade reader because of the beginning of it but I have recommended it to other people who are older to read and so I would kind of push that middle grade category into young adult for it but I think it's a great story. Okay, so now I am in my official young adult category. So there are three. The first one is Lockwood and Co. It is the first book in a series that is kind of like this supernatural thrillers written by Jonathan Stroud. And we follow the main character who is Lucy Carlyle. Through a series of events, she ends up joining a detective agency that is run by another young guy named Anthony Lockwood and they fight ghosts in London, England. I think it is solid in young adult because it is pretty gruesome. I mean, there are deaths of other children. I mean, children are put out into the streets to fight ghosts because adults are not able to see them. The adults are kind of these useless barriers in these stories, but I just really liked the the creativity, the intensity, and again, it was a fabulous atmospheric read to read in the fall and I loved it. There is a TV show on Netflix that I think is loosely based on it, but I haven't seen it and I don't know how much it follows the books or if there's screenwriters that are kind of changing the story. It will say, if you're interested in this idea, V.E. Schwab has the City of Ghost series. I think she's got two or three. I know the first one's in Edinburgh and then Paris. And I think that has also been greenlit to be turned into a TV series maybe. But that is a solid middle grade. Same idea of kids like fighting ghosts or supernatural activity. So I would highly recommend that one as well as a side note. But the next one in the young adult category is Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I think I'm years behind on this one. I read this as part of the, the Lunar Along readathon that um, was hosted here on YouTube. I can link their channels below. I started reading this series and I loved Cinder the best. So Cinder is a young adult science fiction novel that is loosely based on the tale of Cinderella. As I mentioned, it's the first in a series. What sets this Cinderella retelling apart is that Cinder is a cyborg and she is helping earthen people battle with lunars who are people who live on the moon. So it's a fantastic story. It is not resolved at the end and so you do kind of feel like you have to keep going in it but it is a great take on the Cinderella retelling and I loved it. 
The last one in the young adult category that I read this year and loved is also the first in a series. There's like a theme here. I keep liking the first of the series. Ray Bearer. It is a young adult fantasy novel written by Jordan Ifueko, who is Nigerian American. We follow a young girl named Tarisai, and Tarisai is bound by a magical constraint by her mother. And Tari Sai is able to mentally see the stories of, that other people have had in their life by physically touching them. And so as you can tell there are magical elements in this. She uh, is chosen to join a group of children who train and compete for a spot in the Crown Prince's Council of Eleven. I listened to this as an audiobook and loved it. Um, it just, it was lovely. The audiobook is phenomenal. And I am interested in finding the other books in this series. It is, it's long, but it's so worth it. And I should say, I read somewhere this fall that it has been greenlit to possibly be made into a movie as well, which I would be really into seeing. Okay, so I have one book in the nonfiction category that I really enjoyed reading this year and that was Surprised by Joy by C.S. Lewis. It is an autobiography of his life from very early childhood until his conversion to Christianity and it does not go beyond that. I kind of wish that it does. So I've read Becoming Mrs. Lewis which is um about Joy who he ended up marrying. A lot of people I think mistakenly think that Surprised by Joy is connected to her but it's really not. I've watched um, some biopic movies about C.S. Lewis. Ah, all well? All well. Douglas never makes a fuss about going to bed. It appears he never makes a fuss about anything. Except telephones perhaps. I've read some of his children's literature, obviously the entire Chronicles of Narnia series. So I'm kind of interested in like his relationship with his brother. Um, it's not this opening up of his entire childhood. It does talk about his mother's death, but it talks a lot about uh, his relationship and interactions at, at his boarding school. So during his youth, kids would be sent off to boarding school, so from Ireland into England and kind of the abuse and misbehaviors there and you can really see why like till we have faces such a great story but you can kind of see all of the elements that he brings into his fiction stories how his youth was so formed with reading about the gods and goddesses in other religions and cultures he is so knowledgeable on that and he does pull that into his fiction stories. I will also say this, if you read his fiction stories, it does not give you any inkling on how smart he is. But Surprised by Joy I think is accessible for anyone and a really great look into his early. So I started to get into graphic novels this year a little bit more than before and the one that I would say is my favorite, I don't know how anything is going to be able to supersede this ever in the future, but it was Kindred by Octavia Butler. It was adapted by Damien Duffy and illustrated by John Jennings. Kindred is the story of Dana who is a young black writer living in California in 1970 with her loving white husband. But one day, suddenly, she's like ripped out of the 70s and transported back to a plantation during slave times in Maryland. And over time, she realizes that she's somehow being called from her time because she does go back and then gets ripped again. And she's getting called from her time uh, into this slave time to deal with the troubles of a character named Rufus who is a white slaveholder and we learn is uh, her ancestor. And so that's how there's kind of this connection there. And so I loved the graphic novel. I have not, I did not read the original novel by Octavia Butler, but I loved the artwork and the seeing how somebody from our own time who would be treated as an equal who has this normal life like that we're used to now get ripped and put back in this time and how she was so compassionate to not only you know where she was her fellow slaves but also to 
you know, her ancestors, the slaveholders, and like how much of herself she gave, and then the point when she was like, no, this is, this is too far. Just a great book for anyone to read. We're down to the three adult books. Of the three, I'm going to start with The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. This is a detective novel by Agatha Christie. It is the third novel with Hercule Poirot as the main detective. And in this, Hercule Poirot retires to a little village to do gardening and to live a really just quiet life. He's growing vegetable marrow. I think it's like yams. But soon after he m retires and moves here, another village inhabitant who is very wealthy is murdered. So Poirot must come out of retirement to solve the case of who murdered Roger Ackroyd. That's all I'm going to say about it. I would highly recommend that you don't watch any YouTube videos about it or read that much about it. Just pick it up and read it. The next one that I loved is The Blue Castle by L.M. Montgomery. It is the story of Valencia Sterling coming into her own. So Valencia has this verbally abusive family, to just not mince words, and she finally decides that she's gonna move out on her own. She is done. She got medical news that was really surprising, and because of that medical news, she's gonna live her life and not put up with their shenanigans. So when she moves out, she gets a job as a housekeeper and she's at that point on exposed to a lifestyle to which she's really not ever been used to, um, but she seems to really grow accustomed to it pretty quickly. And in the Blue Castle there is romance, there is mystery, and I have a commonplace journal where I write down quotes and I also sometimes will put it in my phone if I'm not near my commonplace journal. and. I wrote so many quotes down from that book. I love how L.M. Montgomery describes nature and the weather and her language is so beautiful and she has a character in there who is a male writer and just his words of how he describes nature and his love of it and then at some point Valencia ends up sort of, I mean I can picture it in my head, this like wood cabin but large house in the woods. Um, sometimes I see pictures of houses by a lake and I like cabins by a lake and I always think of that book like I'm transported back there. She described it so well that I could see myself in it and I just loved reading The Blue Castle this year and would recommend it for anyone. Even though it's an adult novel, anyone could read it. Okay, so here we are. My favorite book in all of the categories that I read this year was such a surprise to me. And it is The Winter Sea by Susanna Kersley. And I picked this up again for an atmospheric read in November because it's the winter sea. It's set in Scotland. It is a very um, kind of cold, dreary, some snow kind of a, a setting. At first I wasn't sure because it is a dual timeline. So our, we follow Carrie McClelland, who is a writer, obviously from Scotland. She decides to set her novel that she's writing in Scotland. Originally she had it in France and then she kind of moved it into Scotland for some reasons. And so she ended up staying in this little cottage by the sea outside of Slane's castle, which is where she decides she's gonna set her novel. And she's inspired to use her ancestor, Sophia, as the main character of this novel that she's writing. You start to get a feel for what feels like fantasy or a magical turn of events because Carrie, the writer in present time, is able to access events of and feelings in Sophia's life that no one alive in the present really sh should know. There's not necessarily records to indicate that any of this is happening. Sometimes she's able to find proof after the fact, but it's like she like gets into a trance almost. And as she's writing is transported back to that time. And so while there are characters and a plot line in the present with Carrie, you're really pulled into this story of Sophia 
back during um, a time period that I didn't know that much about. It's during the, the Jacobites, uh, King James trying to get back onto the throne in Scotland, Catholicism, there's all this like political intrigue going on during that time. And Sophia is this one sort of cog in a, in a very complex political wheel. So it actually is not magical or fantasy. The novel kind of delves into this idea of genetic memory and that is kind of the explanation for why Carrie is able to figure all of this out. It, it feels real and believable and I cannot tell you, I loved every minute of the ride that Susanna Kersley took us on with this character in Scotland. When I finished it, I literally was like, well, first of all, it was a library book, so I was like, I need to buy this book and put it on my shelf. But also just really feeling like completely content and knowing that this was my favorite book of the year. I would love to hear what your favorite books that you read in 2021 are, or even what you're excited to read in 2022. Until next time.